a long time, people believed that wind, and especially offshore wind, was going to save us all from climate change and whatever else we are causing with our use of fossil fuels today. Now, wind and uh, offshore wind in particular are going through rough times. Now, if you look at uh, some politicians, uh, von Stimmelmans, for instance, we should believe that everything is okay and that we will have lots and lots of energy coming from the North Sea that will be very cheap and will be enough to satiate all our needs. Now, if you look at the plans of the Netherlands, I'm going to focus on the Netherlands, I live in the Netherlands, so if you see what is happening here, you know that wind is not going to be a good idea anywhere else. We have the North Sea, and the North Sea is a shallow sea, so that's a tremendous advantage, because that means that you can install your offshore wind uh, infrastructure uh, much more easily than if you have a deep sea. So our plans are to build 70 gigawatts uh, by 2050, and we want to have 21 gigawatts by 2030. Right now, we have six gigawatts. So the trouble with all these plans is that um, interest rates are rising, uh, material costs are rising, labor costs are rising, so if you look at, you know, in total, the, the total construction costs for these offshore wind projects have risen by 30%, three zero. Um, so we are basically starting to fail on the easy part of the transition. If we look at the cost, not for building the offshore wind farms, but for attaching the wind farms to the coast to make sure that you get this transmission network built uh, I hope you're seated. So uh, the plans we have for 2030 calls for 21 gigawatts of offshore wind. Attaching that offshore wind capacity to the shore would have cost us about 26 billion euros. So that's more than 1 billion euro per gigawatt. Thanks to all these uh, rising interests, uh, rising uh, costs for labor, etc. Uh, these costs are now estimated at 35.5 billion. Now, I've done some calculations, so please bear with me. This might be a little bit dry, but I think that it's very important to show you uh, these calculations to basically help you understand what is going on. When we look at these costs, and we take the 2030 goal of having 21 gigawatts. So if we assume 1.5 million euros per megawatt of offshore wind installed, so it's actually building the windmills, and we add to that the transmission cost of 35 billion euros, uh, then we have a total investment cost of 67 billion euros for getting 21 gigawatts built and actually attached to the shore. Now, if we look at you know how much uh, these uh, things produce, uh, then we may assume that they will produce roughly 2,300 terawatt hours over their functional lifespans, which is 25 years. Now, if we extrapolate the costs for 70 gigawatts, then we end up getting a eye-watering amount of 223 billion euros. First, what we need to establish is whether we would have enough, because that's what Franz Timmermans wants, to, wants everybody to believe, that if we build 70 gigawatts of offshore wind, then the Netherlands would have all the electricity it needs. Uh, it would be super cheap, and uh, we don't need anything else, especially not nuclear, because that's the whole point of... of, of this interview that he did. So the Dutch use about 3,000 petajoules per year. Now, if we would electrify all of that and we would, you know, recalculate instead of petajoules, we're going to use terawatt hours, those 3,000 petajoules per year would turn into 830 terawatt hours per year. These 70 gigawatts of windmills if we assume a capacity factor of 50%, which means that half of the year they're actually producing their, their maximum rated power output, um, then they would produce roughly 300 terawatt hours per year. 
so we're already 530 terawatt hours per year short of our goal now i i do want to add this caveat here because it's not certain that we can electrify everything i'm even very doubtful whether we can uh, electrify half of it if we could do half of it that would be amazing but i don't think that we can so we need loads and loads and loads more power and heat to wean us off fossil fuels in the end remember that i said that we would be paying 29 euros per megawatt hour for these uh, 70 gigawatts of windmills plus the cost uh, for attaching those windmills suppose that we would stick that into nuclear and i'm going to grant Telemons that nuclear can be pretty expensive so let's suppose that we can build a one gigawatt power plant for five billion euros and we would put those 118 billion euros into these nuclear power plants that so we could build 24 gigawatts and these 24 gigawatts would produce about 70 terawatt hours less uh, than these windmills would do these 70 gigawatts of windmills but if you look at the total output over the lifetime, uh, when you consider this investment cost, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be cheeky, I'm going to uh, take 80 years instead of 60, uh, then the cost per megawatt hour for these plants would be six euros per megawatt hour. So that's almost five times cheaper than this offshore wind thing. Here's a, a final thing that I want to say about offshore wind and then i will call it a day um one of the principal objections that i have has to do with security so when you look at the baltic sea what we've seen in the past two years has been unprecedented we've seen Nord stream one and two being blown up now there is a gas pipeline between finland and estonia that has been blown up and sweden has just had an undersea data cable damaged or cut I don't exactly know what happened so if we are going to industrialize the north sea we are going to put 70 gigawatts of offshore wind there and we're not alone by the way because if you look at the plans of the uk if you look at the plans of denmark if you look at the plans of norway and germany and even belgium then you see that they want to build 300 gigawatts of offshore wind just imagine the volume of cables that will be required to attach all of this stuff uh, to the end user and all of these cables will be lying on the seabed uh, basically waiting for a russian submarine or i don't know what kind of ship that they use uh, to start cutting cables so the question is what is wisdom right i mean uh, personally if you would ask me i would say listen uh, let's just keep it at 21 gigawatts of offshore wind and call it a day and and let's see whether we still need that in 20 21 years but also build 30 gigawatts of nuclear and some solar and some geothermal if it makes people happy and they really want to then by all means let them do it now i would be certain that if we would actually build 30 gigawatts of nuclear and we would have that up and running by let's say 2045 that that before um, we would have all that built uh, we would actually decide to build 60 instead of 30 and that we would say okay we have this legacy uh, 21 gigawatt of uh, offshore wind and i mean we're not going to use that anymore uh let's just uh, tear it down and let's build enough nuclear power plants so that we can do whatever we need to do so um yeah we're going to do wind we're going to do lots of wind am i happy about it absolutely not do i think that other countries need to um reevaluate their choices yes i do uh do we need to limit the amount of offshore wind we are going to build uh, from a materials perspective i say yes from a security perspective i say yes but also from a grid design perspective uh, we really should start thinking about limiting the uh, use of offshore wind uh, if you have anything to add please uh, sound off in the comments down below please subscribe if you haven't already 
I also have a Patreon page, so if you want to support uh, this little channel, please do so. Uh, thank you all for watching, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.